Howdy dudes. Uh, I got a day off and $40, so I was going to take care of something that's been driving me nuts for a little while, this concrete that's all mashed up. You can see here this uh, sidewalk collapse that uh, once supported this step. Uh, let this be a lesson to you about taking care of your gutters. I fixed the gutter and the power of water to destroy some things is pretty substantial. Um, you may not be able to see it very well. I have this little mark here to see if the stairs are in their final resting place. It sat for a year and it seems to have not moved anymore. So I feel pretty good about it. The way I'm doing this is not necessarily the most correct way. Really I should chip it all the way out and uh, pour new steps, but I don't feel like it. I don't have the, I don't want to pay for that and I don't want to spend the time doing it. As it stands right now, I have about a 14 foot step, 8 foot, 8 foot, then 6. It's a bit uh, hickledy pickledy. So what I'm going to do is a series of topping slabs. I'm going to do a topping slab on the sidewalk, uh, then, a, then just do one on top of each stair until we got a little evened placement of stairs. And I'm going to deadline it to right there. And uh, yeah, maybe this will be useful to you, maybe not. So before I did anything, I made sure that I pressure washed it. I don't know if you can see the, uh, the difference between pressure washed and not pressure washed. Uh, that keeps the impurities off and helps the bond a little better. First order of business is I want to chip that little corner off right there. Get myself a nice straight line and chip that off so that at least my sidewalk uh, has a nice straight feel to it. Also another thing that's annoyed me, before the gutter used to run to right here, which means it just poured next to the house and basically found its way back into the basement. I put this uh, corrugated pipe on there to run it away, but now I trip on it all the time. So I'm going to cut out a section of concrete here so I can bury it underground and run it right to the edge of the property there. I just used my 4 inch grinder with a masonry cutting blade. A masonry cutting blade can be purchased in any hardware store for about $25. Uh, they last for a long time. Uh, I've used, I use mine on tile, concrete, what have you. When cutting out for the corrugated pipe I made two lines to make a path but if you notice the crack underneath my left foot, um, really I just wasted my time. I could have just cut one line and use that crack there but you live you learn. I used my chipping hammer and a paddle bit, uh, made short work of this old concrete here. This is just me using a sledgehammer, I just wanted to show you the pure masculine power that I am. I'm not a big guy, but oop, dropped something there, get it out of the way there, get back to this here. Just the pure, unbridled masculine strength, it's almost unbelievable that any one man could be that much man. Again, like I'm not big, but I'm condensed orange juice, really, of masculinity. It's pow, just look at that. It is unbelievable, really. This is just a dude digging dirt here. We're going to move the dirt out again, make sure you make a nice slope. So that way the pipe runs, the water runs downward as quickly as possible. Clickety plow, just like that we have ourselves a trench. The corrugated pipe I have right now is not quite long enough. Also, I want a more proper fitting for that where those two come together. I want that to be in there tight and look nice and tidy. Um, yeah, so that's that. Though the high side of the sidewalk, as the water brought it down to where it slopes now toward the house, I am just going to dig out just enough for a 2x4 on the side that I'm currently on, so that way the top of the 2x4 is just above the slab. The Golio Coolio is to get it as close to level without being level. I want a little bit of slope so when it rains it goes shoots down that away. This part I can't stress enough. Again, this is a half-assed concrete project, but you want to get your forms as close to perfect as they can be, because that's what holds your concrete. So don't rush this part, take your time, do it right. All right, the trick to half-assing it is knowing what to half-ass and what not to. This I actually want to be sort of close to right. So I go to where the bottom is, which is going to be off the 2x4. And off the bottom step. It's 
and 3 eighths. And we have one, two, three, four risers. 32 something, whatever. Just divided. I used a calculator, but I don't remember what it was. Who would have thought I used math as much as I would? Stair forms. I cut them a bit wild and then set them in place as they were so I can make adjustments to fit what's happening. This is essentially because I put the first form in at the wrong height, but then I decided it's actually way easier just to do it this way. Slap some plywood on the side and then just cut it to the right shape. So it's important to me that each section at the form as you go back is uh, dead balls level. That way uh, your stair will be level, which is pretty cool. If they're handing out awards for the ugliest forms ever made, I would win. But uh, they're going to be—it's going to be strong. And I think I'm going to pour the stairs first. Initially, I was going to pour the sidewall first, but All this corrugated pipe business is pretty cheap. I spent 15 bucks and I could wrap my whole house in, cor in corrugated pipe. Way more than I actually needed. But these little bits here are pretty cheap too, but it cleans it up and makes it look a lot nicer. I got it to the slope I wanted it to and then just use dirt to hold it in place until I can pour concrete over top of it. I had my laborer blow all the dirt out of there. It's already been pressure washed here. You want to get the loose dirt off the concrete so the concrete bonds as well as possible. Ten. Passing this, I'm, uh, I'm not mad about it. Right now we're prepping the forms. Uh, I got Miss Julia in there uh, oiling them up so the concrete doesn't stick to them too bad. That is annoying. Give it a little spritz spritz. Throw some bonding agent on there for fun.
I didn't film doing the path, but it's pretty much the exact same concept. I used a topping mix. Uh, it's the red bag at Lowe's. Uh, it's it can get uh, it can get pretty secure to about half an inch. The bag says two inches, but uh, I found I can stretch that out a little bit. Well, let's unwrap this guy and see how we did. All in all, they turned out pretty good, uh, but I hit the corner with a hammer when I was taking the form off because I'm a stupid, stupid jerk. Big, dumb, stupid jerk. But uh, hopefully I can fix it in this next step here, the mortar step. Hopefully I can make it to where it's not too noticeable because I'm a dumb, idiot jerk. I'm parging the block and the stairs and everything with just standard bagged mortar. I've done two different videos about parging, so I didn't film this part. If you really want to watch a dedicated parging video, just go to my channel. I got one for indoors and outdoors. Pretty much the same principle, but everyone kept asking me if it's the same indoors or outdoors, so I did two videos. Again, the corner of the stairs made me a little sad that I knocked it off, but since I was parging it anyway, um, I just took the uh, edging tool and just smoothed it out there. No one will ever know. I also thought I was filming the uh, installation of this brick path, but I was not. I didn't hit record. But anyway, basically it's just topping mix I used as sand. I laid it out there and laid my bricks level, and then took some topping mix and just put it on top and swept it in. The moisture from the earth will set it all up nice. That's pretty much that guy right there. That's going to be a new fence eventually. I'll fix that. And this will be a little brick patio I'm standing on right now. So that'll do for now. And that'll come out to the other side of a wall. But for now it's going to shoot way out to the middle of the yard. And make a big mud hole. Uh, but it's better than me tripping on it all the time. So now I'll just trip on these bricks. The path doesn't look uh, amazing. But it'll do. One of the big things I want to do is make sure I had a nice slope from here. So whatever water did hit, it would hit the dirt, hit the path, and then slide on out. Especially that's important before the snow. This will just be sitting there, whereas before it all kind of creeped back in. And on heavy snow I got leak, like a slight leak. But I think with the window well thing and the work I did with the grading, should be in good shape. Well, that's pretty much that, folks. Um, I did blow my budget, and my budget ended up being like $75, which... A bit disappointing since I only budgeted 45. That's almost a 50% blowout of my budget, but I got all turned on by this window well thing. I thought that looked nice, which it does, it looks nice, but it was not budgeted for. And I had to get some more topping mix for these bricks I swept in, but it's the name of it. Also, I was meant to be done in two days and it took me four. So that part's disappointing, but other than that, I think it turned out alright. It's nice to finally have steps that don't look like total dog shit and I don't trip up going up and down them. So again, can't emphasize enough that I took a lot of shortcuts on this project so you can choose to use or not use whatever you like. And you're not going to watch the whole thing and you'll just start commenting on the bottom. Oh, don't do it like that. <laughs> well, it's my house. I'll do what I want to do. And uh, But other than that, if you have any questions on uh, maybe how to actually do it, uh, I could probably answer that. I just uh, um, did it my way on this one, and I think. Uh, but honestly, if the stairs, I think, are good to go. They'll be just fine. The path, maybe, if it lasts this winter, it'll last ten years. That's all. Uh, that's my feeling, anyway. But we'll see. I guess.